Hi everyone, today I'll be talking about rationalizing the denominator of a fraction which contains uh, one or more thirds. And uh, previous video, I've talked about some basic properties of thirds as well as how to simplify thirds. Now, in, uh, in today's video, I'll be talking about fractions whereby the denominator have one or more thirds. So, uh, we're going to first of all apply one of the basic property, which is property 3 in our first discussion. So, what was basic property 3? And uh, basic property 3 is where if we have square root of A over here, and we square it, we're going to just get a, an A. So what it does is actually to just remove the square roots. All right, so let's look at the first example. We have simplify 5 over root 3. So we're going to apply that property and say that, okay, 5 over root 3. We're going to multiply the denominator by root 3. All right, so whatever we do to the denominator, we're going to have to do it to the numerator. And as such, we're going to get denominator root 3 times root 3 is the same as root 3 squared. So we will get 3 and then in our numerator, we have 5 root 3. Now, it's worthwhile to talk about why do we want to do this at this juncture because um, we very often learn something for... Um, school and then we don't actually wonder or maybe we don't ask enough questions why this uh, is learned and the reason why we want to rationalize the denominator is simply because if we were to for example uh, simplify a fraction for example 1 over root 2 um, and 1 over root 3 so I mean if we were to simplify these two fractions um, there is not going to be a good way to do that because both the denom both the denominators are in cert form and um, they are both irrational numbers so it's going to be very difficult to find a common denominator that is uh, easy to work with so the idea here would be to rationalize the denominator and turn both the denominators in this case into rational numbers whereupon we can actually uh, simplify them so uh, that's it for our first example. So before we attempt to um, do the next question or simplify 3 over 5 plus root 2, uh, it's worthwhile to consider what what's going to happen if we take the same approach as the first example. So let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to erase this. All right. And I'm going to rewrite the 3 over 5 plus root 2. And uh, we take the same approach by multiplying root 2 top and bottom. And let's see what's going to happen. So I'm going to uh, multiply the denominator first. And even without uh, multiplying the numerator, we're going to see a problem. So here uh, in our denominator, we have 5 root 2 plus root 2 times root 2 is going to give me a 2. Um, we already see a problem emerging. So without doing the numerator, we see that, okay, my denominator still has a root 2 and that means my problem is not resolved. So uh, we're going to have to take a different approach. So let me erase this first. All right, and we'll see uh, how to approach this problem. So consider this following multiplication of 6 plus root 3 multiplied with 6 minus root 3. And um, if we were to treat the uh, 6 in both brackets as the A, all right? If we were to treat this as A, and we treat the root 3 as B, all right? We're going to have... A plus B multiplied with A minus B, which gives us the difference of two squares, A squared minus B squared. So we're going to use this uh, special product to help us evaluate that multiplication. So we're going to have uh, 6 squared minus root 3 squared, which is going to give us 36 minus 3, which is a rational number, 33. So what I've done here is if I were to multiply 6 plus root 3 with a 6 minus root 3, I can turn 6 plus root 3 into a rational number. So, so let's take, for example, if I were to be told to rationalize 1 
over 6 plus root 3. Alright. And uh, what if I were to be told to rationalize this, then I would just multiply the denominator with 6 minus root 3. Of course, I have to do the same to the numerator just to balance it out. Then what I will get is a denominator of 33, which means I have now rationalized it, the denominator. I have rationalized the denominator into a rational number 33. And the numerator will just be a 6 minus root 3, which is fine. So we're now going to give a name to this very special thing that we multiply. So um, if let's say I have a 6 plus root 3 in the denominator, then I'm going to multiply it with a very special uh, 6 minus root 3, which we will call it. Okay, I'm going to highlight this and we're going to call this a conjugate. Okay, so notice that how this conjugate came about is because let's say I have a plus b, right? And in order to get a squared minus b squared, we multiply that with a minus b. So essentially, both the terms are the same. It's just that the signs are opposite. So if I have a plus b, then I multiply it with a minus b. Likewise, I can just reverse this multiplication and say that a minus b can be multiplied with a plus b to get a squared minus b squared. So essentially, uh, the conjugate of 5 plus root 7, as we have seen, would be 5 minus root 7. However, if let's say, let me erase this. If let's say we have, uh, we are asked, what is the conjugate of 7 minus root 11? Then the conjugate of this would then be 7 plus root 11. Okay, so now that we've seen uh, how to form the conjugate, let's talk about generally speaking, how do we say our conjugate? And um, we have, for example, the conjugate of A root B plus C root D, then that would be A root B, right? minus c root d. And likewise, if, um, for example, this thing is a minus, then this would be a plus, okay? So now that uh, we've seen this, we can then approach our uh, previous example we've seen earlier on. So let's say we have simplify 3 over 5 plus root 2, okay? And we can now... Uh, rewrite this first, 3 over 5 plus root 2, and the conjugate of this would be 5 minus root 2, and of course, we're going to multiply the numerator with the same thing, and then the next step will be, let's deal with the denominator first, which is 5 square minus root 2 square, and the numerator, we can just uh, expand in and we get 3 multiplied with 5 right that will give us a 15 and then 3 multiplied with a uh, root 2 will give us a 3 root 2 all right then next we simplify the denominator okay so 5 squared would be a 25, then minus root 2 squared, which is a 2. So 25 minus a 2 will, will give us a 23. So that concludes my quick video on how to rationalize the denominator of a fraction which contains a third. So I hope this helps you to deal with fractions where the denominator has a third in it. So until the next video, you have fun with certs again and... Take care. Goodbye.